everyone, and welcome to another virtual episode of Mike Up Sports, the show that goes in depth with the people who build our sports community. And my next guest is someone we were hoping to bring in person, but due to social distancing, stay at home orders, we have to settle for a virtual conference, but that's okay because my guest is a former state champion with De La Salle and reigning Tri Metro Conference Player of the Year, NJ Weems. NJ will be graduating soon from De La Salle and at some point getting buckets at Moberly Area Community College. We hope it's next season, but one way or another, she's going to play college ball. NJ, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I guess we'll start with the unfinished chapter in your story. You know, you were one game away from winning a second straight state title and We'll never know what would have happened in the rematch with Becker, but how did you handle th that aspect? And since then, how have you processed that unfinished footnote? Um, well, at first, it didn't hit me right away until like, I got a around my teammates and then other kids in the school who also played basketball because like the boys' basketball team had just won um, the section championship. And so they couldn't play at all for the state tournament. So once I seen all of the boys and all of the girls kind of like taking it, it kind of, you know, made me break down. But I still um, try to stay strong for just my younger teammates, just to let them know that they had someone here for them that will stay strong for them so that, like, they can have that shoulder to cry on. And mm. I know for me it was hard because even though I don't cover the state tournaments uh, like I do the regular season, it was tough because I, you know, get to know a lot of teams and players and I was really excited for that rematch with Becker because, you know, all season De La Salle and Becker were two of the top teams in 3A. And then just from covering your team, I felt, you know, for you and the rest of that group, through no fault of your own, you were denied a shot at redemption because I remember the start of your senior season, you know, you dropped the first three games that looked like things were going to maybe unravel. Then you get a big win against St. Michael Albertville and that turned the season around from my point of view. I don't know how you saw it. And so to not have that chance to close out the way you were hoping I felt was, you know, was deflating for everybody, but it sounds yeah. like you're making the most of the situation. Mm -hmm. That being said, before uh, your senior season, you know, I guess you've been getting buckets for a long time as a basketball player. So do you remember the f moment when you got that first itch to play the sport? Um, I think it was my fifth grade year. Um, well, actually my fourth grade year, but I was too young my fourth grade year. So I had to wait until I was in fifth grade. And so uh, it was a co-ed team, so it was boys and girls. And then... Uh, it was my grade school I went to. It's in St. Paul, but they changed the name of it. But yeah, that's when I first found out that I wanted to play. And also, like, everybody in my family played. So I thought, you know, why not play? It was fun for me, though, having, like, a basketball family so everybody understood, like, practices, what I need to do to get better, and how they could help me get better, you know, and get to where I am today. And so how many siblings do you have, and where do you – rank chronologically um i have five total and then i'm the second youngest okay because i remember covering your older brother at tartan mckeel yep. if i'm saying that right mm -hmm. and i read that there were more so how tough was it for you how annoyed were you that you had to wait a year to join this co-ed team you were ready to go at fourth grade and then you find out no oh, you gotta wait another year um, well, at that time, I didn't have, like, my drive for basketball that I do now, but I just waited, like, just played basketball, like, at the park with my brothers until it was my time. And you mentioned being part of a basketball family, so did all of your brothers play the sport? Uh, yeah, they do. Well, they don't, only three of us play, like, still, like, on a team, the rest just play for fun. And my dad, he plays, like, in a league with older men. And so that's that. And then my stepmom, she plays for fun here and there. But only three of us, like, really are still on, like, organized teams. How did that help you 
train into the player you became, you know, getting a chance to grow up and, you know, play pickup and then co-ed ball with all of those siblings? Um, well, it's definitely made me a tougher player because I have all brothers. So, like, when we play against each other, they don't take it easy on me. So I think that helps me, like, when it comes to, like, my games. It makes me stronger, like, finishing through tough fouls and stuff like that. So I think it's really helped me become the player I am today. And then you join a co-ed league to start with. So not only are you playing against your brothers, you're playing against other boys. And so mm -hmm. what was that experience like? Because you don't see that, obviously, at the high school level and college level. But to get that opportunity early, how was it going up against uh, boys in your younger uh, co-ed days? It was kind of weird because, like, a lot of the boys didn't want to, like, hurt the girls. So they wouldn't go for real. So that was kind of tough because, you know, you couldn't really, like, play against, like, their full potential. And then they found out how tough you were, I imagine, yeah. and <laughs> said, all right, we're not playing nights anymore, right? Right. Uh, but you said you know, the boys and men can play a more physical brand of basketball. So how long did it take for you to adapt to that? Um, I guess it didn't take that long because I kind of grew up with it. I feel like it was kind of harder adapting to, like, girls' basketball, I suppose, because, like, changing, like, the basketball is, like, bigger than smaller balls and just like the physicality like with refs and stuff they like call stuff right away for girls and then just like a lot of girls I feel like they don't expect that right away like at a younger age but like, like now in high school it's different because girls are working all summer getting bigger so they expect that in high school so I guess that was just my adjustment it's an interesting facet I was going to bring up you know changing to you know playing against all girls you mentioned the ball is smaller and as you said you know they may not play as physically as you are accustomed to so when you had to make that switch and you're playing against uh, all girls competition how did you adapt to that change well I guess like with the ball aspect of the men's ball I just worked on my shot with girls ball it's like I would go to the gym with my dad, work on that. And then also when we went to the gym, they didn't, my dad and my oldest brother weren't so much like with body, but just height wise, just so I can work on that. Cause girls, you know, a lot of girls are taller than me or that I faced have been taller than me, like in the post area than from when I was a little kid. So I guess that's kind of how I adjusted. What did you enjoy most about uh, growing up and playing, you know, in this co-ed league and just, you know, playing the sport, you know, at such a young age? Um, I don't know. It was just really fun growing up, being able to play with my friends because, like, there were no championships that you had to worry about, like, no state titles. So I feel like it was kind of stress-free in a way because I didn't have, like, such a big burden rather than, like, in my high school years, you know, being, like, the number one team last year. Everybody was giving us their best game this year. So that made it harder. Everyone was expecting us to be – uh, two-time state champs so that was like a big burden on my shoulders and that's kind of where, like where the stress comes in but I mean I have faith in myself my team and my coaches I knew we could have won this year what do you enjoy most about the sports whether it was growing up you know in the co-ed days where you didn't have to worry about state titles or records or you know what you've been able to experience the last few years what have you enjoyed most about playing the sport of basketball um the thing that I enjoy most about basketball, just the sport in general, is making, like, friends through it, whether if we didn't play on the same team or, like, just from different schools, going to, like, different games. And I even made a few friends during, like, the breakdown photo shoot. So that's nice. It just brings a lot of different kids from, like, different communities and backgrounds together. What would you say was the toughest part to adapt to as you were developing in the sport of basketball, you know, making your way through and, you know, getting a feel for what your potential was. Um, I guess just knowing where I fit in and not trying to like, not overstepping, you know, just contributing to the team in ways that I know I can, rather than trying to do too many things at once. When did you sense that, hey, you know, 
I've got potential here. Um, probably like my freshman year, just seeing like all having coaches reach out to me, like college coaches, and just like being like featured like different awards I'd win. When you mentioned awards, did you pick up a few before high school or? Um, in eighth grade, I picked up some, but they were just like team awards. But I don't think I got, yeah, I didn't get any like Minnesota awards. Yeah, I don't think, I don't remember seeing you until a freshman. So I don't know if you were playing up on varsity by that point. Oh yeah, fresh, my freshman year was my first year playing like full varsity. Eighth grade year, I played for Tartan's JV team. And then I got in like varsity a few times, like when the team was up. Okay. And now, you know, you started, it sounds like you started in Tartan around that area. And then mm -hmm. you decided to make the move to De La Salle where uh, you left quite a mark. And that might be an understatement just from covering you the last few years. What led you to suit up in the black and gold on Nicolet Island? Um, well, just the tar environment, like with the coaching staff at the time, I just didn't really click with them at all. But like once I talked to like do the sales coaches and their coaching staff, I really liked it there. They were like really welcoming. And, like they truly wanted me to succeed. I feel like at Tartan, they just told players what they wanted to hear at the time to keep them around. And I do so they told you like what you needed to hear, even if you didn't like it. And so are there any moments that describe what you're talking about? Anything you can recall where maybe coaches got into you or challenged you, uh, but it sounds like it made you a better person for it. Um, yeah. Like in the games, if I'm like, if I miss a layup, the coaches will, like, pull me to the side, tell me that I need to do that. And, like, other coaches might just say, like, hey, you got it next time. But they, like, actually, like, push you to get harder, like, through your mistakes. Not, like, they don't talk it up. Like, they don't sugarcoat anything. They tell you what you need to work on. Okay. And how familiar were you with their coaching staff, you know, Tanisha and her posse, as I call it, because wherever <laughs> she goes, they always follow. How familiar were you? with that group and when you got to De La Salle it sounded like you connected with them really well uh, how did they help you become the player that you are now um well at first uh before I came to De La Salle I didn't know anything about De La Salle I didn't know anyone there I didn't know any of the coaches but um once I did get there they like helped me in the weight room helped me around the post like just worked on my footwork and got me to be a like the better post that I am today and then once they seen that, like I solidified that post area, they will pull me outside, help me work on my shot, stuff like that, just to expand my game, expand my talent. So when you discovered the history and the pedigree that De La Salle was establishing at the time, you know, how did you take that into consideration when you were playing for them? Um, well, I definitely thought like it would be hard to like keep that tradition going like winning all these state titles, but I seen like with the teams that I've had over the years, like different players coming in and out, like I knew we could do it. And like all those players leaving their mark and just like leaving their knowledge of basketball there so that the next players and next teams can keep doing what this school has been doing for years. Now growing up before you got into De La Salle or even during, just at some point, were there any idols in the sport? I imagine you've watched a lot of NBA, WNBA games. Any player that you would see in person or on TV and go, I want to be the next version of that player? Um, well, I mostly like just watch like the Lynx and Timberwolves games when I go. Um, and I was like watching Sylvia Fowles, which I think she's a really great player. Other than that, I don't think I really have a favorite NBA player that I like would want to be like. Oh, and that's fine. It, it's just I I talk to a lot of athletes, and when I did mm -hmm. All Star games, I'd have them list their favorite player, and you did a mix of NBA, mm -hmm. WNBA. Uh, but I could see how Sylvia Fowles was an inspiration with the way you play, the way you uh, handle the game. You kind of stick to 
the interior and that's not a knock. It's just, it's interesting to see that. When did you sense that that was your strength and you were going to stick to it? Um, Like I always realized I was one of like the tallest and like strongest on the team. So I kind of knew that I like will be a post player for a long time. Like since I was a younger kid. So I kind of knew since I was like younger in my elementary school days, that I always be like a strong post player probably until like end of high school until I got into college where I would need to expand and go to like the wing and be able to make those shots and like take them off the court. Well, if folks like Candace Parker and Neka Gumake can knock down threes, uh, I think uh, you'd have a chance of doing the same thing at Moberly uh, when that time comes. Yeah. Uh, so you got some time on varsity as a freshman, if my memory serves me correctly. And so do you remember suiting up for your first varsity game where it wasn't just, you know, a JV varsity crossover where, you know, you're on the varsity team, you're at this new school. Do you remember that your first memory or of that first game? Well, I remember sitting like anxiously on the bench, waiting for her to call me in, you know, trying not to mess up going in, you know, just doing what I do best. It was definitely like stressful, like, following after Olivia, but I feel like I got the job done for it to be my first game. And you had your moments. You averaged about six points per game in your first year. You had a couple of big ones, St. Anthony, Maranatha. And so what would you make of your freshman season as you were coming into your own and as you were telling me, uh, also getting to – follow and observe folks like Olivia Travis who played a similar role that you did? Um, I think my freshman year definitely like made me made me want to keep getting better for like when it's times that I'll be like playing behind another good player but when it's my time to go in to make sure I make an impact on the floor and make sure like it's memorable for people watching. How did you feel you grew in your freshman season when you get to your first section playoffs and then you find out you're going to play in the state tournament for the first time? Well, it was definitely something new because, like, with Tartan, we got sent home after the first round of sections. So being able to continue, just being able to, keep, like, play with my teammates was definitely a fun experience and a new experience for myself. On a related note, what changes and what stays the same perhaps when you you said you went from a school at Tartan that now they've been trying to find their footing again in basketball. They've had some success. And then you go to a school like De La Salle where they have established their reputation as a basketball power. Um, I guess like the transition wasn't too rough because like if you go into a winning team, but it's definitely like, a lot of people, like, when they found out what to do the sale, it's just, like, getting a lot of questions about people who went there, people who, like, were still there at the time, I guess, as far as that. But, like, basketball-wise, like, in practices and stuff, I don't really feel a difference because, like, both teams, they want to win, and so they're going to push you hard in practice. So that way, it wasn't that big of a transition. So what kind of questions were you getting when folks found out that you were going to – you know, jump from, you know, the school in Oakdale and you're going to cross the river or I guess be near the river, you know, heading over to mm. the other side of town. As you probably heard the joke that Minneapolis and St. Paul area folks don't like to uh, cross over, but you decided to take that chance. Um, it was a lot of questions like, why did I decide to go to do the sale? Um, like, why didn't I stay at turn? Because I could have been a star and stuff like that. And, like, if I just knew people there that, like, had made an impact on the school. What do you remember from your first state tournament experience? Uh, I know up until you won state, you got knocked out in the quarterfinals your first two years. But to get a taste of that atmosphere for the first time, what was that like? Um, it was, like, a way bigger arena, like, bigger than I've ever played in before. And the court seemed a little bigger. But um, – Well, I think it is bigger because at state – they use the college and pro courts, so mm -hmm. and ten at extra that, feet. We played in the ice rink. Yes, Mariucci. They had they used that uh, facility for a couple of years. Yep, but um, I don't know. It just like kind of made me nervous, like having all those people watching, and like when we were down at halftime, 
that was kind of stressful too because you know I wanted to like make it to the next game but it, overall it was a fun experience like being able just to make it that far for my first time and you mentioned Olivia playing a role in your development you know so who are some of the folks you looked up to whether they were coaches or older players when you got to experience uh, what life was like as a De La Salle athlete? Um, well, like with my team, like all my post players that I've, like all the older post players that have played with me, I looked up to all of them because they all helped me like in practices. They'll push me in practice to go harder, encourage me during games, like if I felt like I wasn't doing well. And then our post coach, Ashley, she helped me a lot become like the post player I am today. She'd always work one-on-one -on -one with me, especially like this year, like right before the games, we'll do post stuff, just me and her in the back gym. And I feel like that helped me a lot too this year before games and work on free throws and stuff like that. So I'm grateful like she'll put me to the side and do that. What do you enjoy most uh, on the court when you're out there? You know, what kind of play or sequence gets you amped up? Um, I like doing like kickouts to my other team when they make the shot especially like when we're down and we're coming back. I really like that. It pumps me up. So you said you enjoyed doing kickouts and the last couple of years, especially this past year, you had several options to go to with uh, Sydney Brunsway and Keani Lockett and a couple of others who could knock down threes. So how does that help you knowing that, you know, if you don't like what you see down there, you could feed it to somebody who could knock it down from the perimeter? Um, it just gives me confidence that we'll score every play. Because, like, if I can't get it down low, I have confidence that one of my guards can make the three-pointer or even Savannah at the high post making that um, mid-range shot, too. And if not, I can get the rebound, go back up with it or anything. I just know that I'm just confident that we have, like, plenty of options to go through with, like, the ability of all of us being able to score. I almost forgot Savannah, and she was a solid three-point shooter, too, if uh, I remember the stats. And the, that De La Salle team you had this year, we'll get to that, but <laughs> they were maybe the most versatile that I've seen. Yeah, this is probably, I feel like, by far one of, like, the best years. All right, so we were talking about your first year on varsity. How do you think that helped you? go into your second season, even though, you know, you were, weren't one of the primary scorers yet. Going into your sophomore season, you had a few more breakout performances. So how much more confident were you going into your sophomore year? Um, I was way more confident because I knew what I needed to do and, like, what to expect the next season. So that kind of helped me. And also just having – it was pretty much the same team. I think we only had, like, lost two – seniors from my freshman year to my sophomore year so it wasn't that big of like a transition because we pretty much had the same team so that was good same team and then same result make it back to state you get knocked out in the quarterfinals again and so what happens when you reach the same level and then run into that same roadblock um it was definitely like more heartbreaking because we were actually up throughout a lot of that game my sophomore year and for us to lose, I don't know. It made me sad. But we were able to come back in, like, the consolation bracket. So that was, I guess, a plus to it, being able to still win um, some type of award. Well, that would change in a big way in your junior season. But it was a run that not a lot of people were expecting because, you know, that year – I think half your team, at least half your primary rotation, they were recovering from injuries. I know Keani couldn't play until midway through. And so the De La Salle team at the start of the season looked nothing like it did at the end. And so when did you sense that this year, this your junior year, that things might go differently when the preface of it would suggest otherwise? Um, well, when we got our team back to full health, I knew 
that we could be unstoppable just because of all the players that we had and like the different abilities that we each had. We had like a lot of players who can play more than one position. And I feel like we've always had that idea to sell, having multiple players play multiple positions. I feel like that gives us an advantage because other teams don't necessarily have those type of players. They have single role players. And I feel like that makes them like average teams. And so what was that season like where starting off you were shorthanded and then I imagine you saw the difference when Kiani and I can't remember if Sydney was hurt. I can't remember how many players are hurt, but. That was, it was Kiani, Sydney, and Nora hurt at the same time. So the starting lineup. In no so the starting lineup in November probably looked nothing like it did come March. Right. And so how do you think that helped you grow as a player? Because, you know, you had to start the season and you won a lot of games, but you, you didn't have Keani to run the floor. You didn't have Nora and her all around capabilities and you didn't have Sydney and her perimeter attack. So how did you handle going for, I think at least half the season without those elements in your artillery? Um, it was definitely shaky at first because some players were playing spots that they hadn't played before. But as we kept going and with more and more practice, um, we definitely got the hang of it. And then that's when we knew, like, we can just keep going. Even if they were to sit out the whole season, we could have won. But luckily we got all three of them back and we did win. What did you notice was different about how the team cohesion was how well they played when all three of them came back uh, what was different that told you that we could make a long run here um well at first we had to get back in the groove of things but once we did um we kind of just all clicked back, back together right away and that's when i knew like the way we were playing together that's how i knew that we could make our run and potentially win state and this time you finally get through the quarterfinal round. It was against Hibbing. It wasn't an easy win, but you know, it was a change from the last couple of years. So how relieving was it to know that this time you got past the first hurdle? Um, so like we're actually right before the game, we're all talking about how like we've been losing the first round every year. And then we like all said, we just have to get past this one game and then like the state championship is ours. Once we got through that first game, we're all excited. And then we just kept putting in the work that we needed to to win the um, state title. Yeah, well, even after that quarterfinal, uh, it wasn't smooth sailing yet because uh, you had to get through Holy Angels, a team you're mm -hmm. highly familiar with being in the same conference. And so knowing you had to face them for the right to play in the championship, you, know, you got to see them for several years. And you know that rivalry, really the last couple of years, really – was something special but knowing that you had this quick turnaround you win the quarterfinals and oh we got to play a team that we faced twice right what did that do for your psyche um we kind of knew what we needed to do to in order to beat them but the same thing like they knew what they had to do to beat us so it was just kind of hard because a lot of every time we play them it always goes back and forth like with the score it's just a matter of like our mistakes and like how we take care of the ball is how we beat them. Well, the first couple of times you were able to pull away and get some convincing wins. You know, the second or the third time it was tied until I think you hit that jumper with eight seconds to go, if I remember correctly, to put you guys ahead. So what was it about the third meeting that made it more tense, if you will? Um, probably because like we've played them before and like they always want to beat us. And also because it was the semifinal. So, you know, we were both trying to make it to the championship. And so how nervous were you the third time where, you know, the first couple of games, you were able to get some separation this time around, it was a nail biter to the very end. Um, it was definitely very stressful because it could have went either way. And of them winning or us winning, it was just a matter of like us taking our time, not letting them speed us up, running our plays like all the way through and not shooting like after one pass. And just like the little things is what put us ahead. 
it was you who gave De La Salle the go-ahead game-winning bucket with just seconds to go in the second half. So do you remember that play or that sequence and how excited you were when you were able to knock down the jumper that got you past Holy Angels? Um, yeah, it was definitely like a big thing. And actually, I don't even think that was the original play. I don't think I was supposed to get the ball. I can't remember. But like once I did, because we were working on that pass with Ashley like all week getting that over the head pass because um, Holy Angels post like she fronts a lot. So we knew if we got that, that we could kill down low. So we were working on that pass all week. And then when it came time in the game, we got it. So you're running through the drill and I imagine every team has like plan A, plan B in that scenario. But when the original play was scrapped in favor of you know going to you and feeding it you know on a high low, it sounds like, and you realize, all right, uh, this is my moment here. How did you approach it? Well, I just knew that we needed to score. Um, I didn't do a lot of thinking. I just knew I needed to go up. So even if there was someone behind me, I was going to draw the foul, knock down the free throws. After their last possession, how quickly did you exhale when time expired and you knew – you were going to play for the championship? Um, right after the buzzer went off, I just ran to my team. We were so excited. But I don't know, it was just definitely a memorable moment. Was that the first time you hit like a go ahead bucket late to win a game? Um, that I can remember, yeah, that was my first time. And you mentioned, you know, working with Ashley for that scenario and so I know everyone dreams of that moment but how does it hit you when you actually get a chance to live it out um it's exciting it's definitely like an adrenaline boost to being able to like execute the plays that good after like working on it how do you think that fed into the team's psyche the team's morale that you know, not only are you playing for a championship, but you beat uh, one of your conference rivals and one of your closest games all season to do it. Um, it just, like, shows, like, the rival, I guess, and how, like, intense it can be and how exciting it can be constantly playing them because, like, you never know who's going to win or what's going to happen considering that the games are always close. And, like, both teams' talents, it's just always, like, a toss-up. You had a couple of days, so you had a day to practice and get ready for Becker. As we said before, De La Salle, they'd won state titles, but you weren't part of one yet. So what was that day before like? The practice, I think, like, we mostly just went over, like, what they ran, like, what they would possibly, like, what kind of defense they will do to us, just so that we can be, like, ready for anything that they threw at us. And then, like, the night before, I was just, like, anxious um actually Kiani and Savannah came to my house that night before and um Savannah was sick actually so we actually spent a lot of the night trying to make sure she felt better for the next day and that morning like my mom got her like orange juice and stuff like that so that was stressful going for that because we thought like she wouldn't be able to play but she ended up being able to play and like played a big role in that game from that point on was orange juice part of your pregame ritual um, well, not my. I always drank uh, strawberry milk for my games. Strawberry milk? Okay. I did not know that. So why strawberry milk, if I may ask? Um, I just like it better than chocolate milk. <laughs> you like it better than chocolate? <laughs> uh, where would I rank it? Because I've had vanilla flavored milk. I guess regular milk. Vanilla would probably be my favorite. Strawberry and chocolate I enjoy too. <laughs> but I would mm -hmm. not have guessed that you were a strawberry milk person. Any other pregame rituals that you do? Or? Um, before all of my away games, I wore a pair of sunglasses. What about the home games? Um, nope. Only away games. <laughs> like the bus ride. I fell asleep on the bus. Was that your poker face trying to avoid uh, giving away yeah. <laughs> body language I to the other team? At me when I sleep. Yeah, what was that? Like, I like to like I wore the sunglasses, I guess, as like 
to protect me because I don't like people looking at me while I'm sleeping. Oh, okay. So you're, you're getting in a quick nap. I see. I was going to say, well, especially when you play against like Holy Angels or these other tri Metro teams that gave you a run, you know, you don't want them to see what you're thinking either. Yeah. <laughs> now you mentioned the championship game against Becker, how Savannah played a big role. You know, and I think this is an interesting or an unsung aspect of the game. You know, Savannah didn't really light up the stat sheet all that much, didn't score and just had a few rebounds, but you mentioned the role she played was instrumental in helping you knock off Becker. So what did Savannah do that we might not notice, you know, if we're following the games and the stat sheet, but, you know, you said, you know, without her, we maybe don't win this. What was it about Savannah that helped you get over the top? I feel like her confidence was up that game, <clears throat> was up that game. And like with her passes, they were just like spot on. So I think that was like a good thing, like good aspect in helping us win that game. Scoring was like having, like giving other people the opportunity to score and getting them open to score, even if it wasn't for herself, getting her teammates to score. And defensively, she got a few blocks in. And that's something that really stood out with me up until this past season where De La Salle didn't always run up the score, but it was their defense that was really hard to get around, especially in class three A. And so I mean, what was it about your team or your coaching staff, the schemes you put in? How do you think De La Salle became such a strong defensive team where they could apply pressure and make other teams uncomfortable? Um, I think it's because it has to do like with our conditioning and staying in shape that we're able to press the whole game. And most teams can't handle that for a full game. So I think that's what really helped us getting those quick steals right away and getting those easy points. And also the length on our team, like with me and Savannah getting the blocks down low, Kiani with her like arm span, getting the steals up high and busy in those fast breaks. I think that's what really helped us. And that championship, you, know, you pulled away at the end, but it wasn't until you held Becker scoreless for, I think, the last two or three minutes. So it was another close game. But you know, speaking of defense, you holding them without a point for those last few minutes, uh, how were you able to pull that off? Um, I guess, again, like our defense stopped them from scoring, but then we also took care of the ball in our end, making sure we got the good – like, it was an open chance to score before we actually scored and, like, getting the ball moved around before throwing up shots. What you did to prevent them from countering you made the difference. You pulled away. You win a state championship. And so even though, you know, De La Salle had won a few by that point, you know, this was the first for Tanisha Scott, the first for all of you. Do you remember how excited you were when you had clinched the state championship for De La Salle? Yeah, I remember like after winning, we all ran to each other, jumping and laughing. And like when it was time to get our awards, I couldn't stop smiling. Looking at myself on the big screen. I was just so excited. The moment felt so surreal. And then like later that night, we had um, went back to our school for a little ceremony. Then came back to the Target Center to see who won 4A. And then ended up going out to eat after that. It was just a really fun day for us. You not being able to stop smiling. That's, uh, mm -hmm. as I know, you have a pretty strong poker face where you don't reveal too much, at least from the games I've covered you in. And so I guess it's a different story so, to let those emotions out. But for you, knowing that you had pulled it off is emotionally just, <laughs> what was that like? It just made me happy being able to win like a state title for the seniors that are leaving having my coach like win her first day title with this or since she's been at D and it was just overall like I just felt good for my team and good for myself. What do you think that did for you? You, know, you had of course a club season to get ready for an AU, but what do you think that did uh, for your profile as a player as far as confidence, ability and just development knowing that you had a state championship um, Under your it definitely belt. Built, my, um, built my confidence going into AAU, but it also made me want to expand my game because, like, after the game, um, my Tanisha was talking to me about, like, how coaches were reaching out to her. So it made me want to 
like expand my talents, being able to like go outside of the perimeter and stuff like that and bring the ball up. What changes when you have a state championship season to look back on? Um, from this year, like just knowing that we had that state championship, um, we knew that teams were going to give us their best and that we had like big shoes to fill considering that like we were supposed to be winning this year. Everybody expected, expected us to win this year. Um, it definitely does like bring a burden on our shoulders, you know, just wanting to win that. And like we were like so determined to win. It definitely does like make everyone go harder. Of course, none of us knew we'd be fighting a pandemic at this point, but going in, you find out that one of your top players from that championship team and Nora Francois was not going to be coming back. How did you respond to that news? Um, it was definitely hard because like, we were always like the duo playing on high low. So I was going to miss her in that position. But Savannah did a good job, like, playing that position, the high-low position when she was there. And, like, we all wanted her to stay, but we understood, like, it would be better for her to take a different route. And I remember the shock at hearing that news because when I had covered you guys against Minnehaha and I watched the state championship and just following along on the box scores, I felt she was the leader of that team and – you know, she was someone I was really looking forward to seeing. What was it about Nora's game that you enjoyed most as a teammate? And how do you think that played a role in that championship season last year? Um, what I like most about Nora is that she could do, like, play B in multiple positions. Like, she would post up when she had a smaller guard on her. And then, like, when she had, like, a slower post on her, she could – shoot the three or drive past them and also she had good defense and she was like another tall taller player to be able to play with so that was what I like most about Nora just like her um, versatility and you mentioned Savannah helping fill the gap and compared to you know last year you didn't have injuries uh, hampering the team so everyone was back at full strength yeah and so what was the mood like entering this season where you mentioned everyone is targeting you now because of De La Salle and their history with girls basketball. And at the same time, you know, you've got to do this without one of your best players. Um, at the time, we were all like kind of skeptical if we'd be able to um, win state again. But as we went on, we got more confident in ourselves and just like in each other, knowing that we could potentially do it again especially like when it came to the tournament time, how we were like going through the teams, we knew that we'd have like another shot at winning state. You touched on this. It sounded like, you know, everyone understood why Nora decided to step away and focus on herself. How do you think that helped you grow and understand that you, know, you guys are out there, you're playing a sport and I imagine having a fun time doing it and at the same time, it sounds like you all were understanding that there are sometimes issues bigger than championships and win-loss records and just basketball. Um, well, we just like to make sure that everybody's doing all right, like mentally and physically. And like when it comes to schoolwork, um, the coaches are really like, are pretty like clear that they want us to make sure that we're doing, like we're doing well individually first before we come to the team because they don't want like any outside things come to the team, like affecting the whole team. I know it sounds kind of bad, but they just would like really like focus on individual health rather than like keep bringing kids in while they're like stressed and stuff. I wouldn't say that's bad because what you're talking about, I mean, makes sense because, you know, if you're going in and you're got uh, a situation or turbulence that hasn't been settled, you know, it can, you know, put a damper on, individuals as you noted it can affect the rest of the team and so I think what you said makes sense that you know if you're not well you're gonna have a hard time focusing no matter what yeah I think another thing that would help you get through any obstacle no matter what it is you know the camaraderie you built with you know Kiani I know her parents speak highly of you and a lot of my friends uh often bring you up so uh whatever you're doing uh, you're, you're you're doing it right NJ so keep it up but uh, how do you think that 
makes playing basketball more fun when you get to win championships and how do those friendships uh, with Keani and I imagine others too. I just can't think of them <laughs> because I don't, I'm not in classes the way you are. How did that help you get through some of those tough moments? Um, well, like the, the whole team, they're just really supportive. So that's all it made things easier. Just having a very supportive team. Um, and that's kind of like how I got through the season with my teammates, just constantly uplifting me. My coaches like constantly helping me get better and just like parents also supporting me as long as my parents do. So that just made the whole process easier. What have you enjoyed most about those friendships with Kiani and, you know, Sydney and Savannah, you mentioned her a few times, even Nora. What are some moments or interactions that you're glad you were a part of? Um, I'm just happy that I got to meet them overall because every time we hang out, it's like, it's never a dull moment. We, they always make me laugh and we always have a good time together. So I hope that like these friendships last for a lifetime because I really do enjoy having them in my life. Any stories or fun nuggets you'd like to share or they made you laugh or some um, other thing? Like right after the state tournament from my junior year when won, um, Savannah, Kiani, and I, like we went to MC and Nora's house we just have like we bake stuff together and she would always cook us breakfast the next morning and like we just make videos together so that was always fun always fun with it i got a taste of that this year so what kind of videos uh, would you guys make for yourselves well um before tiktok was popular we just make like music videos we play the music loud and just sing in the camera dance in the camera so who was the best singer among your De La Salle brethren? Um, I'd have to say to myself. Is that something, is that one of your hobbies you like to do outside of basketball? Yeah, I'm not the best at it, but I like to sing. My mom doesn't like what I do it though. <laughs> <laughs> Entering your senior season, it was one of the most unpredictable starts that I've seen. I remember covering your first game, it was against Dowling and you know, it was a close game and, you know, things maybe probably didn't pan out the way you were hoping it would. So how tough was it to get through that first game with everything that happened? And how did you focus on moving past that game? Um, like before, we don't really like as a team, we like agree not to like focus on past games because there's nothing to do but rather focus on what we need to do as a team to get better so that like we can get through games, even if it's a tough like loss, how we can get through them as a team or how we can prevent them as a team and do the things that we need to do. How did you grow maybe from that game? Because, you know, I was there and, you know, saw a moment that you probably would love to take back if you could, but at the same time, I saw you and the rest of the team move past that and have one of the most dominant seasons in class 3a we got past it like within we just had like a team meeting and you know like got things in order and like what we need to do to move forward as a team that's kind of made it easier like sitting down with each other getting on the same page and like just talking about what we need to do together to move forward I remember having some chats like with your coaches and you know, just the folks who know the De La Salle community. How did they help you get through what I imagine was one of the tougher moments you've had as a player? Yeah, um, well, they just constantly like, reminded me like I'm still like a good person because I don't have – I have a pretty clean sleep. And then just like it happens, people get frustrated. They do stuff they don't intend to, but they get over it. The next couple of games, you know, you had to play it. Well, you weren't able to play against Aquinas and, you know, that game, you know, didn't play out too well. Then you had to play Hopkins. So you come back, but what would you say was the hardest part about, you know, losing the first three games the way you did? Well, um, I feel like out of all my years, we always have a rough start, whether it be injuries or like losses. So I'm not going to like, it was, like, definitely something, like, we could handle. But we just knew, like, the competition, like, the tough teams were out of the way. And now we could continue to dominate with the rest of the teams. 
And I know you had to miss a game, but how long did it take for you to, uh, you know, get back to normal, if you will, and focus on the next game, as they often say in basketball? Um, not long, because I was still able to practice with them and stuff. So it was just like, it wasn't hard at all. So you get your first win against Grand Rapids, and then you get to play St. Michael Albertville. STMA, they're one of the perennials in Class 4A. They're always in contention for a state tournament. And, you know, you had maybe one of your best performances of the season and get De La Salle a big win against the top 10 team in Class 4A. So that St. Michael Albertville game, what was working for you and how – cathartic was it to get a big win like that after a rocky start um well, I just like our guards like we're quicker up and down the court and also like if you don't start press a lot of teams couldn't handle that once we got those little steals right away they were getting frustrated so that led to mistakes which led to us getting like points so that's what worked for us and also it was a good thing because Actually, like, Star Tribune had put out, like, an article projected us to, like, lose the next few games. So that was nice to prove them wrong. That game, though, you get the big win, and you're saying folks weren't expecting you to pick that up. What do you think that did for the team chemistry, morale, and just your own confidence, knowing that we can still hang tough with the big boys? Um, it definitely just boosted our confidence just to just so that we could – like prove all those people wrong. Was that the first time that maybe you entered a game or a situation where folks had doubts about your abilities? Um, no, there's been like a lot of games where people doubt if you're going to win or not, but it's just like how you respond to it and like how you choose to like go into that game. Well, that St. Michael Albertville win, that was part of a stretch, which I thought was incredible in Class 3A, where after the first three games, uh, you only lost once. So you had like 20-some-odd wins to close out the season. Kind of a crazy way to end it. <laughs> what do you think was the common thread in that win streak? Um, I feel like our defense helped us win a lot of those games. Because I don't think teams can really handle our defense, especially like with us pressing and then switching it up from like a zone or man to man. Even though we play a lot of man to man this year, we sometimes do it in a zone, and teams don't really expect that. And another one of those wins came against uh, another 4A team that made it to state. And I have to say, even without the ending uh, you guys deserved. It's still cool to say we got to beat a couple of 4A state teams, Eden Prairie. That one went to overtime. You had a big game. Keanu had a big game. So what was that game like? It was on the road, so you didn't have the home confines. And then to eke out a win against a high-caliber team in Eden Prairie. Um, well, that was another game that Star Tribune projected us to lose, so – it's kind of the same thing. It boosted our confidence, so we didn't have to go in there, win, and play hard just to prove, like, that we're wrong. So when you're able to play games at Moberly, I think the secret for you is uh, just going in, find somebody that will uh, predict you to lose the game mm -hmm. because apparently that seems to fuel a fire in you guys. Yeah. I know by that point you already had a bunch of wins under your belt, but what did that win do for you? Um, it was just another way to prove, like, everybody who says we can't win or down to our talents wrong. So it's definitely a confidence booster heading forward in the season. Now, they're not a 4A school, but I think one of my favorite moments from this past season was the rivalry with Holy Angels. I know you have a friendly rapport with the Holy Angels players. What is it about the Holy Angels rivalry that makes it special, but also how you guys have become friends uh, through all the games and all the matchups? Um, well, because it's always fun playing against them. And so, like, the competition is always, like, a competition playing against them. And I think, like, with the friendships, like, during AAU, you know how you play, like, with different people. That's, like, one of the ways we became friends. And also just, like, talking during the games and after the games. That's how I've made friendships with some of the Holy Angels players.
what are you going to remember most fondly about that rivalry where it's kind of a 3A version of Duke, North Carolina, like Hopkins, YZ, it is up in 4A. That's how I look at it. Uh, how do you see it? Um, I don't know. I just see, like, two teams kind of, like, with the same abilities going at it. But, like, it's always a friendly competition. So it's always fun. And on a similar note, who would you say – it could be from Holy Angels or anyone else. Who was the toughest player you had to go against in your high school career? Um, probably mm, Destiny Oberg from Holy when she went to Holy Angels. What was it about her game that made it tough for you? Um, well, when she was like, wait. Like she was way taller than me, and bigger than me, so it was kind of hard, like trying to move her out the paint. And then also she could shoot like those short corners, and she also like could dribble too. So that was kind of hard to guard, like a post player, kind of like mixed with the guard. Of all the high school gyms, and I guess we can throw in Williams as well in the mix if you'd like. But uh, what was your favorite gym to visit throughout your high school days? It probably would be Williams Arena. And then I think by that point, you mentioned getting used to the atmosphere. Well, you go from Mariucci, which was a hockey rink that they just threw a basketball court on. Williams, it's more set up for basketball. What did you enjoy most about it? Um, just like when all the fans were there, that was fun. And then also I like their um, benches, like how it's like below the court. I think that's fancy. So once you're done with your one or two years at Moberly, is that a place you could see yourself playing in? Um, it's a possibility, but I kind of want to go somewhere warm. It's interesting you mentioned Williams because I guess you have a similar intimate feel at your place as well because, you know, De La Salle, it's not a big gym. And I have to set up on top of the benches, uh, which doesn't happen often. What did you enjoy most about playing home games three, at the island? Um, just like the home court advantage. And then like sometimes like it was the kids would stay after school, come watch us play. So that was always fun having the fans there. I think too, being a De La Salle student athlete, whether or not this helped you, I'm not sure, but you got a lot of practice with the rivalries. We mentioned the conference series with Holy Angels, but you also have these annual rivalries you have Creighton Durham Hall and Benilde St. Margaret's which owe to you know, the history with those schools and then the last few years you got to play Minnehaha Academy and they revived that rivalry and that turned into another spectacle so for you you know to see a sold out crowd you know for the girls game how cool was that to have all these big rivalry games and to have an audience a, a big audience uh, witness your talent it was always fun just seeing all the familiar faces and like friends and family, like being able to play in front of them, even like, especially for the ones you don't get to see play often. It's nice to have. So whether it was in conference or you know, the out of conference rivalries, what, which one did you enjoy the most or look forward to the most? Um, I was like playing Creighton because there are a lot of like friends on the team between like all the players. So it was always fun playing against them. Even though you didn't get a chance to play for a state title, what did you enjoy most about your senior season? Um, just being able to play with them like for my last year and having like a good successful season. And I saw yet yeah, you got a lot of uh, reps in with the TikTok music videos. So I remember, I think I asked who the best singer was. Who do you think is the best dancer on the team? Since that's a common theme when your TikTok content. Um, I'll probably have to take that too. I'm multi-talented. And you couldn't share this with us? I mean, you've got <laughs> singing and dancing abilities. I don't know what else you have up your sleeve. Um... Um, I can cook and I can bake really well. Any favorite recipes? Tacos. We are making tacos. So 
If you're a fan of Moberly, just wait. Uh, shrimp, Alfredo tacos, dancing. You can see all of that <laughs> down in Missouri mm -hmm. next season. Um, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned how you didn't know anything about De La Salle or the coaching staff with Tanisha and her group going in over these last four years. How do you think they've helped you grow? I'm, because I know Tanisha in particular always has something nice to say about you. Just like when they found the times and like days that work with me individually, I feel like that helped me out a lot. I'm kind of like a one-on-one -on -one type of person when it comes to like getting better at anything. Even with school, I like working one-on-one -on -one with coaches and they like help me with that. And like, I think I've worked one-on-one -on -one with all of the coaches at least once. So I think that's really helped me become the player I am today. So I'm like thankful for that and like adjusting see what works best with me and to being able to help me progress. Okay. You know, moving forward, was there anything, any instruction or advice or guidance that you'll take with you as you head to Moberly? Um, just spreading down the court and not looking back. And, you know, like just not thinking about the past and focus on what I need to do to get better for the future. Well, and speaking of your future, we've mentioned you're headed to Moberly. I know you it took you a while to settle on a college and you decided to at least start in the JUCO route. So what led you to Moberly and how do you think starting your college career in the JUCO system will help you down the road? Oh, well, let me to Moberly is like during all this like pandemic stuff, they were like really like dedicated to building a relation and like connection with me. Like all the coaches reached out to me, even like one of the um, college students or players reached out to me too. And I like that. They were like dedicated to build a relationship with me before I got there, as well as like, there's like, they were reaching out to coaches before I even like signed with them or committed. They were reaching out to coaches to come like look at me and follow me. So I really like that too. And then like with the Juco route, I think it will open up my recruiting and get me to the higher level that I would like to play at. I'm glad you brought that up because how many offers did you get to play to D1 school? And what led you to say, you know, let's try this out first in the case of Moberly? Um, I had one and then there was some miscommunication with the coaches. So then I actually lost that one, but then I've had, I had multiple like JUCOs reaching out to me and like D2s and D3s. So then I guess I just decided to go with the JUCO and just do a year or two there and then go out to a university. Well, I know you mentioned uh, you'll be working on expanding your range when you get to Moberly, but one aspect you flourished in especially in the Holy Angels games this year, and other ones I had a chance to cover, your ability to penetrate inside. I lost track as to how many M ones you got in the games I covered you. So what goes into that? How do you make sure you get the right angle or advantage to set yourself up for a play like that? Um, constant practice, like against taller players and bigger players. And then just, like, know where I'm at on the court, knowing, like, feeling where the defense is at, know which way I need to go, what I need to do, so that I can make those tough shots. I suppose that's where having Ashley is a big help, because I think she's got a couple inches on you and played yeah. your position. And having that tutelage as well from a former D1 athlete, you know, how helpful was she, and I imagine Tanisha and everyone else was too, but how helpful was she knowing that, you know, that's where you want to be and you're getting to work with someone who got there. Um, well, she know what needs to be done to go to a higher level. And she know like what I need to work on like what other um, coaches at that level we're looking for. And then she like implemented that like with drills and different, excuse me, um, drills and like different activities that we did so that I could get better and potentially play at that higher level. Any moves that she taught you that you uh, are going to take with to Moberly? Um, Sigma. Sigma. Sigma? 
Yeah, or stigma. Stigma. Like, what is that? <laughs> so it's like, I, I mean, it's better, I don't know, to like show you. Because it's, it's hard to explain. We are always asked about it in practice, too, because I never heard about it. <laughs> or I did, but I didn't know that was a name for it. What are you going to miss most about the high school experience, uh, knowing that, you know, your high school days are done and, you know, the next chapter of your career is inching oh so closer? Um, I guess just being able to see my friends, like, constantly and being in the same state and then. And that being said, you were able to continue the tradition that was built in the early part of the decade. And while you got one state title, who knows if you would have gotten a second, but knowing that you played a part in D. LaSalle's athletic prominence, what does that mean for you? Um, I guess it just always be memorable being able to like leave my mark on D. LaSalle and having people like ask who I was and like having people look up to me. So that will always be something I'll carry with me as I proceed with my career in basketball. Did you leave any advice or feedback or just encouragement for, you know, Kiani, Sydney, and Kennedy Click? I know she came in this year, played a big part in this team. You know, wherever they end up, you know, what would you tell them as, you know, their high school profile evolves? Um, just kind of tell them, like, to always be confident in themselves and, like, you know, don't let anyone knock them down and do what they have to do in order to succeed, like, individually and together with their team. What are some interests or hobbies, activities that you enjoy doing that you could see yourself continuing down the road? Um, hmm. Well, kind of when I go to university, I want to expand, like, into sports and, like, sports psychology and doing something around there or something like with sports medicine, probably becoming like a trainer and like helping like injured sports players or like helping like prevent injuries. Whenever you do get the chance to suit up for Moberly, whether it's next season or next year, who knows, but what excites you most about getting an opportunity to continue playing basketball at the college level? Um, just being in a new environment, being under like new coaches and a different team, just seeing like how I'm able to adjust so that we can be successful. And what do you think this opportunity is, says about the investment, the effort you put in and how much you've grown from your days playing co-ed basketball in fifth grade to where you are now? Um, it just shows that like I put work in, so it rewards being able to play college basketball on a scholarship that's like it's for like really big to any prospective athlete what would you tell them about what to expect the challenges that come with playing basketball and how to get the most out of it well i just let you know it's definitely a lot of work so if you're going to play, you got to actually, you got to really be invested into it because it's going to take up a lot of your time and you just got to be, you just got to want to get better. You got to want it more than other people want it for you. Well, I'm sure uh, your family is excited and everyone who's worked with you is excited. And as I mentioned before, I think what impressed me the most about you was not only your talents down low, but how much you resonated with members of our basketball circles when all these parents and coaches and my friends are speaking volumes about you you know that's a pretty good sign that you're doing something right and would have been fun to see that rematch with Becker but you know I'm glad I've gotten the chance to get to know you a little bit watch you grow and I can't wait to see what you do at the next level thank you so uh, that will wrap up our conversation. Thanks again, NJ, for taking some time to share your story with us. And I hope you share plenty more as you uh, switch from the Islanders to the Greyhounds. Yep, and thanks for having me today. Yes, and if you'd like to be a guest on a future taping, virtual or in person, 
just contact us at tsvtelevision at gmail.com. Again, NJ Weems, you can see her next fall, perhaps next winter at Moberly Area Community College. But wherever she ends up, you're going to be hearing a lot about her in the years to come. That does it for this episode of Mike Depp Sports. I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.